All right, well now, it's gonna be time for our Tech Corner, and with us in the studio today is Rob Bellinger of Olympus. Rob is going to show us the new BX3M <coughs> microscope group, I believe that is, from uh, Olympus, and the, uh, the new stream software that goes with it. So, uh, Dirk and Rob, take it away. Thanks. Okay, Rob, so uh, the B3X? B BX53. <laughs> BX, I don't know why I can't remember. BX53, okay. Yeah, so uh, this, is, this looks kind of like a manual microscope, actually. Yeah, this is our upright compound metallurgical microscope. Um, this setup is a manual stage, a manual focus. Um, we can upgrade it to add motorization. The key features in the new setup with this microscope is a little bit smaller frame design, a little smaller footprint, but it's the illuminator and the nose piece and the integration of everything. So everything is encoded now through the illuminator for different observation methods. The nose and, and piece- And by encoded, you mean uh, as so you change it, report digitally back to digitally the software? Okay. Back to the frame and okay. to the software if it's connected, of course. Okay. The nose piece is also encoded, so when you change the objectives, it's keeping track of the calibration and the magnification you're imaging at or taking pictures of. The, um, the system can be ran through a, uh, a hand switch oh, okay. and it's going to give you updates of which uh, observation method you're on, which objective you're on, and give you some control over some of the um, lighting for intensities. And it also has hot shot buttons down here, like function buttons that can be interfaced with the software. So you can program those program to do? Program to do okay. specific features like snap a picture or turn a light intensity up or down, okay. different things like that. The frame itself has a built-in um, light intensity manager now as well. So if you're not using a software interface, you're just using it manually through eyepieces, no digital cameras, you can run the light intensity manager to control light intensity at different objectives, magnifications, and different lighting sources uh, or different lighting techniques. Okay. So bright field, you might not want it to be so intense in the light. And if you switch to dark field, you might want the intensity turned up quite a bit. So that can all be programmed through the light intensity manager. And since it's reading through the encoded feedback, when you make that change, it automatically adjusts the light. The lighting on these frames are also um, LED now, so no more external halogen, it's all LED lighting cooler, for yeah. longer life, cooler temperatures. Um, the frame can be set up for transmitted and reflected light. We offer a lot of different configurabilities of the tool. Um, you have a four position uh, mirror turret system if we want to, that can give you more observation techniques, maybe even fluorescence imaging. So it's kind of an all-around tool for imaging techniques, so we can bridge a gap of different um, samples. Okay. And uh, it's kind of a workhorse microscope for our, a huge sample range. Um, coupling it with the digital camera system and our new version of Olympus Stream 2.1, it now interfaces with this microscope. It's gonna read in all those encoded features so your uh, bright field or if you're in dark field imaging, a lot of benefits to that. Some of those benefits, if we can look at the software here, we can run... Um, so we're looking at a PC board, it looks like here. Yeah, just okay. something real basic. We can look at different observation methods. So we have bright field, dark field, pole scope observation methods. One of the new features that's key here that we just launched is a mix mode feature. So when we run mix, it's going to run a mixed light through dark field that mm -hmm. is a quadrant LED light source and it's going to allow us to mix that dark field and quadrant lighting technique with bright field imaging, polarized light imaging, even fluorescence imaging uh, to give us a lot more lighting techniques and contrasting techniques. And how, how might that look on, so, on, on this sample? Well I can actually show you the hardware again here. We can show you the mixed light source so this goes in and it has the different quadrant lights and with that hand switch we can actually rotate around the quadrant lighting. Okay. So when we look back on the sample here again. And this is an LED light source right there then. This is an LED light source with um, four different quadrants okay. that can be angled at different degrees. Okay. And if we go back into the software, if we choose our mixed light here, so what we see live on the screen right now is just normal bright field. Okay. But if we turn on our mix light, we're able to get a little bit more definition around the edge of the sample, wherever protrusions or something happens off the surface. And we can also turn on that quadrant right from the software here. So we have a full microscope control interface 
tool window, they call it here. Oh, to the right there, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and this allows us to turn that quadrant on and we can rotate the lighting around. So as I click here, you can see that I can change the angle of lighting. So this okay. gives us a lot more contrast at different sides and angles of the sample surface than we'd get with just normal bright field lighting. We can also switch to mix into different lighting techniques. So now if I switch the mirror turret up here to polarization, you can see on our sample now things highlight that are a little out of phase oh, okay. and they really glow like the contaminants on the surface. But we lose a lot of the background information. Well, we can turn on our mix again with our observation method here and we can get a, the best of both imaging oh, okay. techniques. So we not only have polarization and showing the highlight of the particles on the surface that we just don't see clearly enough in bright field, but we also get all the background information from our lighting from the mix mode. Okay. So it's a great new feature to mix with all of our imaging techniques. And some of the other new features in the software, we have the, uh, the ability now, let me switch back to bright field. And the software is going to automatically notice we switch back to the bright field observation. We can run mix with bright field. One of the new features uh, built into the software is one of our new processes. For a manual stage like this system here, we can do what's called instant MIA stitching. So if we hit start on this, this allows us to manually move the stage to okay, different so points. Okay, you're, so you're, you're manually uh, adjusting, uh, just manually yeah. moving the stage. Just uh, translating the, the stage here. with okay. the manual knobs. So I'm moving in X and Y. And as I move, it's going to stitch together the image. And it just notices the translation of the stage movement. And once I'm done, I just so hit it, stop. So at the same magnification, you're basically creating a larger field of view, uh, yep. essentially. Requiring a nice large field of view so you yeah. can do more imaging uh, techniques on it in the software for measurements across a large area. Okay or just to get a larger picture of the surface yeah. in a certain imaging technique. Yeah. One of the things that's new with the software as well, when you capture an image or take a picture, it's gonna prompt the user, has the option to prompt the user to record all that information. It won't uh, be able to record some of the manual information, like if you're running certain filters that you push in or what your aperture or field stop is set to. So you can actually come in here and select what it is on the frame. This plays a big role in one of the next features I'll talk about too, the kind of a recalling these inf this information. So it allows you to select that. We hit OK, and it shows our stitched image overall. It's still calibrated, so we can go in and perform manual measurements, circle to circle or point to point measurement. That's all built into the stream software, of course. But say you want to take this image, and if your microscope is set up in a different imaging technique, let me go back to a live image real quick, you can see that we're looking at a completely different imaging technique, different magnification, but if you want to go back to this image and apply the technique that was used to capture this image, you can use a new feature called Restore Device Status. Okay. So we select this and it's actually going to show us everything that this image was taken with. The target status for certain of the encoded mechanisms and if it was motorized it would automatically switch those but since they're encoded I have to manually rotate the objective switch back to like the 10x objective and now we can see that this switched to a check mark and I have to change my observation method back to bright field as well so once I set that all of its configured any of the manual stuff like the aperture stop controls it prompts you up here what to set them to manually okay so whatever people manually entered yeah. uh, that information just that shows is up here. information back that you can put in the right filter set and, and aperture, aperture and all that stop. sort of subject as long as that person annotated it earlier exactly with what was in that saved so uh, profile that when we took that picture that prompt window came up asking you to record those values okay so as long as they've recorded them you can reset back to them when we hit OK we can go back to our live image now and it's going to be at the same mag and the same contrast right, okay. and lighting techniques as the captured image was okay so that's a really nice feature for restoring and getting another image on a sample using the techniques that you'd already captured with. Um, and this is all, these are new features on, on this version of Stream? New features in this version of Stream uh, okay. 2.1 and with the encoded interface of the BX53M microscope. So the um, microscope control and light manager control is all through the software as well when it's connected. The connectability of the microscope has been simplified. It's just a USB connection to your computer system now. 
and our newer cameras are also USB connections. And as you make changes to your, your hand control down here, those are reflected uh, on the software as well, it reads, it reads from this? Yes, so okay. either way, and those function buttons as well can be programmed. So if I wanted to reduce my exposure with the function button that I programmed or increase the exposure by pushing the function buttons, and then I can take a picture is what I programmed function three for. So now it takes a snapshot of that image. That's all controlled through the hand switch. You can also go back to my live image here. I can show you. You can turn on and off the um, mix observation right from the hand switch. So you can get that quick reaction. Okay. And it also gives you a display of what you know, cube and what observation method you're in at that time. And um, kind of the industries that are, that are typically using this, this product and this setup? Sure, since it's a kind of a workhorse microscope with all the different imaging capabilities and techniques from, from fluorescence to just DIC or bright field, it's a big range of different techniques, like everything from semiconductor to metallurgical, uh, looking at metals, grains, um, carbon fibers, different uh, structures. you got printed circuit here that printed you're Printed circuit, yeah, right, yeah circuitry. Um, to medical device, so stuff that needs a little bit higher magnification, a little higher resolution with compound objectives, many different imaging techniques, transmitted light, so you could look at glass substrates or um, transparent substrates. And I think you said with the with with, with the BX fifty BX fifty three right BX fifty three uh, BX fifty three that that it makes a good, and I, I, I hope I'm using the right term here. <laughs> Entry, the, the microscope by itself is a good entry level microscope if you want to be able to expand and, and add on more and more features. I mean, the ability to add uh, motorized mm -hmm. stages and so on and so forth. I mean, it's a good, a, yep. a good building block to, to really uh, to start with and be able to add on and, and add quite a few different features, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a good point to bring up if you just start with uh, bright field imaging and you want to add the mixed mode feature, it can be added to the frame later on. Um, you can add the camera system to it afterwards. You could add in encoded Z uh, scales, so where the software can read the Z drive, and our software has the ability to stitch the images together in Z. And if you have that encoded Z, then you can render the three-dimensional images in our software okay. and do that height data measurements. So that's all add-on options. Um, motorized control can be added on at any time. Um, different objectives, different illumination methods like fluorescence could be added to the system later on. So okay. you're right, it is a great building block. Um, most of the time we'll customize the tool and get the right illuminator knowing where you might want to grow with the system as well. Okay, well Rob so. Bellinger uh, from Olympus, the BX53 and Stream, Stream 2.0? 2.1. 2.1, yeah. okay, <laughs> all right. All right, Rob, thanks. All right. Thanks Appreciate again, it. Dirk. All right, Appreciate back to you, Mike. Well, again, as we just heard, that's the uh, the BX uh, 3M series, specifically the BX 53M microscope and the Olympus Stream 2.1 software to go with it. Dirk, nice job with Thanks. that tech corner. Thanks, and, Mark. Uh, uh, Mike. Rob. Um, Rob. Mike. <laughs> Mike. I'm Mike. That's Rob. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. And Rob, great job there with that. All right. Well, that's our show for.